let's start working on the neck. So first I'm going to select the neck and do a position constraint to the spine nub. It pops onto the neck. And we will create a couple of controls for the neck area. One to control the neck, the other to help control the spine. Aligning it to the neck nub. Renaming. We're making a clone of it now. Using its base setup, uh, the interpolation and things like that, I'll make it so it's a slightly different type of shape. Let's continue setting up the neck. I'm going to take the neck control and just like the neck bone, I'm going to position constrain it to the spine nub. All right, I'm going to take the neck bone and I'm going to simply just link it to the control neck. And then with a little bit of testing, you can see that the control neck rotates the head and also the neck. Now that the neck control is done, let's select the spline IK chain and take a look at its twist start and end angle. Very similar to the swivel controls for the elbow and the knee. switch over into wireframe and let's try to give ourselves some fins in order to be able to see exactly what uh, happens a little easier. Let's go ahead and hide our geometry and make this a little easier to see. Selecting our IK chain of our spline IK and playing with the twist start and end angle again to see what it does. As you can see the start angle really isn't going to be used but the end angle is definitely how we twist our torso. So we want to set up our spine twist control using some wire parameters. This is number 37 in your handout. So we're going to select the IK, right click, choose wire parameters, and then transform twist end angle, select the control, transform rotation Z rotation. A new window will open up and you'll see the IK chain and the control spine. We're going to change the direction, hit connect, and close the window. And a little bit of testing, we can see by rotating the uh, control spine twist that we're able to control the twist of the spine. 
Now you'll notice that in my handout I actually have changed the formula in that window to the Z rotation divided by 2. Um, that's completely optional. To finish up the spine control, we'll position constrain the control to the spine nub. And you can see with a little testing, when we move the spine, both controls, the neck control and the spine twist control, follow the neck and the head. Let's unhide our character and take a look at the handout and see what we need to finish. If you have your hands made and your arms, you can link the clavicle controls into the upper spine bone as well as the clavicles into the upper spine. Consider linking the hand controls, the elbow controls uh, into a main control as well. Um, this is completely optional in the sense of it could be linked to the waist control, but a main control such as I am creating here can be used to move your entire character around the scene and get a starting pose. This control would never be used to animate your character moving in a direction. This is merely for placement. Um, the only time that you would possibly use this to animate would be when you have a cycle of some sort. I'm going to name this control main. We'll link the waist control to it. And when we move it, it controls the rig that we have right now. Now that's the end of the handout, but as an option, let's create a control for the pelvis. So I'm going to take and position and orientation align a new control that I named control pelvis and align that to the pelvis bone. Pull that out of the character. Now, to start out with, if we try to link the uh, pelvis bone directly to uh, the control, it seems to work initially. movement works okay. The sideways rotation seems to work well, but the forward and back definitely breaks the rig. So let's unlink the pelvis and try to use constraints instead. Freeze transform the control. Orientation constrain the pelvis and that now seems to work correctly in all directions. And then position constrain the pelvis to the control. It'll snap to its position, but we can fix this by clicking on Keep Initial Offset. Now when we move the control, we get our gyrating motion. And when we rotate it, we get our rotation motion. Make sure that we link our pelvis control into our control waist. And when we move the main control, everything should follow.